Well, in Climate Watch, scientists say they can now distinguish between human-induced weather patterns from naturally occurring events. And according to the study published by the scientific journal Nature Climate Change, scientists can now detect the fingerprint of externally driven climate change, and they're able to conclude that the Earth as a whole is warming. Joining me now, CBS News meteorologist, climate change expert Jeff Baradelli, and Washington Post climate reporter Andrew Friedman. I want to start with you, Andrew, to break this down for us. How were scientists able to really make this distinction between natural and human-induced weather? Well, they basically looked for uh, expected patterns related to climate change in the sort of spatial patterns of temperature and moisture around the world. They kind of looked at uh, what they would expect to see from physical theory of how climate change would play out. For example, uh, certain temperature variability and increased moisture content in different areas, because when it gets warmer on the oceans and when the air gets warmer, you carry more uh, water vapor. So they looked at these spatial patterns. They used some relatively complicated statistical techniques and machine learning. But what, what they were really able to do, and they were actually inspired by a tweet from President Trump, uh, which was incorrectly uh, talking about one day's weather in a particular location compared to global warming. He was arguing that it being cold in New York uh, invalidates climate change, which is not true. Um, the scientists ended up finding something that they were very surprised by, which was that they can identify the climate change signal in any day's uh, mm. weather globally. Mm. Jeff, when you step back for a second, you look yeah. at this, why is this data so significant? This is very significant. And by the way, I'm glad to see Andrew, because Andrew is one of the best writers uh, on climate mm -hmm. change in the world. So, Andrew, glad to have you along. Um, Thank you. You're welcome, of course. So why is this significant? Well, you know, we were able to detect a climate change signal over the course of a long term. So decades, certainly centuries. But now we can actually detect it on a daily basis. So that means climate change is affecting our weather every single day. That pattern started to emerge around the year 2000, and around the year 2012 is when we've locked it in, meaning that every single day we can extract what is the uh, human force climate change signal mm -hmm. and the natural signal. Now, when I say human force climate change, they didn't actually deduct that it was human force climate change. Mm -hmm. It was some type of external forcing. But because we don't know of any other external forcing, it's got to be human force, whether it be a combination of land use changes or global carbon dioxide increases. There's some external forcing. So now we can actually extract what's natural, the natural variability, mm -hmm. and what is not natural, what is forced by humans. And that's happening every single day. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time that we've been able to detect that in science. And Jeff, you say this isn't you know, just a scientific advancement, that there is something even more threatening underneath all this. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes to show you that this is happening fast. We can already detect the human fingerprint on a daily basis mm -hmm. means that this is only going to get worse. And we're going to start seeing that essentially contribution from human force climate change become increasingly important and significant as we move on through time. And we're seeing that play out right now with the fires in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an unprecedented situation in Australia. Climate change obviously has a big part of it. It's both natural and it's climate change. But as time goes on, the climate change signal grows and eventually it becomes a, a bigger force than even natural variability. We hope it doesn't get to that, but it's possible. And Andrew, when you step back and you sort of look at big picture, what does this mean as folks are examining climate change? What do you think this putting this forward means in, in a bigger picture as we look at this as a whole? Yeah, in a bigger picture, it changes the conversation. Uh, the conversation had always been scientists and communicators such as myself and Jeff basically saying, you know, weather is not climate. Climate is different. It's uh, over the course of time kind of the average of weather. But now we know that, the det that we can detect the influence of uh, a forced climate signal in a single day's weather. Mm -hmm. That's sort of like, you know, uh, having an astronaut on the space station take a snapshot of the Earth and the, you know, the, the pattern of clouds. And you can kind of just call that climate change mm -hmm. in a way. We've never been able to do that before. That's uh, strikingly different. And it may present, you know, a whole new way of really talking about this and writing about this situation. Mm. Andrew Friedman and Jeff Baradelli, I want to thank you both for joining us. You're welcome.